Dr. Joshua once said, for new technology to replace the old, it must have at least 10 times the benefit. My review paper for today is one such advancement in the field of oral and maxillofacial surgery for navigation guided surgery. These are the contents of the presentation. The oral and maxillofacial region has a complex anatomy with a lot of vital organs and a complex network of nerves and blood vessels. This complexity has posed a great difficulty to the surgeon by limiting the field of view during the surgery and also by increasing the chances of risks to the vital organs. In this digital era, navigation guided surgery has considerably helped in minimizing these risks. A little bit into the history, navigation guided surgery was first brought into the field of medicine by want to be for neurosurgical procedures. It was then used for ENT surgery. In the 21st century, navigation guided surgery made its advent into the field of oral and maxillofacial surgery. So what this navigation guided surgery does is it provides a 3D image data of the patient and the real time guidance for the surgeon during his procedure. So the surgeon exactly knows where his instruments are placed within the surgical field. He can thereby prevent injury to the vital organs. This procedure increases the reliability and also the precision during the surgery. It is indicated in case of distorted anatomy for complex reconstructions, for verification of accurate reconstructions and symmetry, for precise localization of tumors and also for identification of bony landmarks. The components of a surgical navigation system include the localizer, the surgical probe and a CT scan cell. The localizer is similar to that of a satellite. It is the main controlling device which gives a virtual reproduction of the normal anatomical structures. The surgical probe, it sends signals through the infrared diodes or pointers and it emits track waves. This is similar to the GPS system that is attached to our vehicles. The third is the CT scan set which give, gives a computer tomography database. This is similar to the map. Now moving on to the types of navigation system. Navigation system can either be optical navigation system or electromagnetic navigation system. An optical navigation system makes use of infrared sensors and light emitting structures or reflectors whereas an electromagnetic system makes use of electromagnetic field and reference points. In case of an optical navigation system both the pointer and the light emitting structure should be connected to the computer to know the exact position of the instrument within the surgical field but this is not the case in case of an electromagnetic navigation system. However too many metallic instruments within an electromagnetic navigation system can cause uh, inaccuracies due to interferences with the field. The principle of intraoperative navigation is very similar to that of a GPS. In a GPS what we do is the destination is first selected. Then the satellite sends us signals and shows us the way to the destination. Similarly, in a navigation system the target area is first selected. Then the surgeon uses a handle pointer that is connected to an infrared camera to maneuver through the tissues. The camera will show the exact position of the pointer in the patient thereby the surgeon can reach his target area without damaging the vital structures. The steps in navigation guided surgery can be divided into pre-operative steps and intraoperative steps. The first thing to be done is to import the pre-operative data of the patient to the system. The next is the selection of the procedure that is to be performed. The third step is to locate the position of the normal anatomical structures of the patient. Then the surgeon decides his pathway to the surgical field. After this, the intraoperative steps are performed. The first thing is to set up the system and check the proper functioning of the tools. Then the patient is positioned and the navigation mode is activated. Now the applications in oral and maxillofacial surgery. The first is in maxillofacial trauma surgery. So in the oral and maxillofacial region, the most common type of trauma that occurs is orbitozygomatic midfacial fracture. Here the reconstruction of the orbit is very critical. With the help of a navigation guided surgery, the surgeon can compare the orbit of the unaffected side with that of the affected side and precisely do a reconstruction. This procedure also helps the surgeon to view the position of the orbital flow multiple number of times during the procedure. It is found that the course of the nerves, thickness of the bones, marrow spaces and length of bones vary from patient to patient. So with the help of navigation guided surgery, the surgeon is able to know the exact location of these anatomical structures and perform a more precise surgery. It is used in cases of distraction osteogenesis, inferior border osteotomy and in case of vertical renal osteotomy. In case of inferior border osteotomy, the chances of injury to the inferior alveolar nerve is very high. With the help of navigation guided system, this um, complication can be prevented. In case of vertical ramal osteotomy, the oscillating saw is always in very close relation to the lingual nerve and to the sigmoid nerves. With the help of a navigation guided system, the injury to these vital structures can be prevented. In 
the skull base surgery, the middle of the skull base and the intratemporal fossa were always considered inoperable areas. This is because of the limited access and the difficulty in controlling hemorrhage when occurred in these areas. With the help of navigation guided system, precise drilling can be done in these areas. Important structures such as foramen ovale and foramen rotundum can be preserved. The soft tissues can also be preserved during this surgery. Complicated case of dentoalveolar surgery where an impacted tooth or a supernumerary tooth is located in close relation to the maxillary sinus or to any nerve, navigation guided surgery can be used. So, navigation guided surgery helps us to accurately know the location of the tooth. The access point can easily be determined with the help of navigation guided surgery. It also helps in preserving the adjacent vital structures such as the permanent tooth germs, the incisive papilla, the apical papilla, etc. Similarly, in cases of implant surgery where the implants are to be placed in close relation to the sinus or to the inferior alveolar nerve, navigation guided surgery can be used. The implant placement is more precise and reliable with this technique. When any foreign body enters the body, the normal anatomy is distorted completely. With the help of navigation guided surgery, the location of the foreign body can be precisely found out and it is retrieved more easily. Navigation guided surgery was found to be more precise than other techniques such as stereotactic technique, digital fluoroscopy and intraoperative ultrasound imaging. The advantages of navigation guided surgery are, it is very precise and reliable. Since we know the exact location of structures, very small incisions are required. It reduces the overall operation time. Complications are reduced and the intraoperative position of the instruments can be located at any point of time of the surgery. However, it has a few disadvantages, the first one being the financial investments. The cost of investment of the setup is very high and the cost of the surgery also becomes very high. The time for preparation of the surgery is high. It has a steep learning curve. When this system is used in the mandible, it poses a few difficulties because of the mobility of the mandible. I would like to conclude by saying that navigation guided surgery is a promising addition to the surgical armamentarium because of its precision and reliability. It gives a better clinical outcome for the patient. With the further development of software programs, the pre-operative time and the time during the surgery can be reduced considerably. These are my references. Thank you.